eyeshiners and eyeshine parents. I'm Teacher Kara, and I am so happy to welcome you to our first session of Eyeshine Aids Art Camp Online. Now, I get asked a lot, Teacher Kara, how are we going to be making art if we don't have any art materials at home? So, this is a very important challenge, especially now when it's safer to remain indoors. Teacher Robert and I put our heads together and we came up with some fantastic solutions. We'll be making art and art materials from things you can find already in your home. So eyeshine parents, let's help our eyeshiners nurture the gift and help them collect all the ingredients that they'll need. Today we're going to learn something special. We're going to be making our own DIY watercolor paint. This is a really good paint because it can dry up and be used again and again. I'm so happy to get started. This is what we will need. Okay, so for today's DIY watercolor, we will need three things. First, most important ingredient is baking soda. So baking soda is a regular household ingredient that many households use because it's a natural cleaner, a good way to disinfect stinky sneakers, and also for making fun bath bombs. Today, we will use this as our binder. So a binder in paint is the ingredient that helps bind or stick together the pigments or the color that we will be using. So this binder, which is baking soda, will help hold on to our paint. Second ingredient we will need is the color. So in art, we call them pigments. Usually pigments are powdery, but today we will be using these inks. They are actually food color. So they're very safe. Um, sometimes we have one or two colors at home. So today we're going to be showing you three colors and how with these three colors, we can mix many, many more. And the last very important ingredient we need is the water. Water will be used as our solvent. So a solvent dissolves the paint that we will be needing when we're painting. Because sometimes paint can get too thick and clumpy and then it doesn't want to spread. So we will need a solvent, or in this case it will be water. And this water will thin out our paint so that it's easier to spread onto paper. So we have three things. We have our binder, which is baking soda, our pigment, which are the food color, and our solvent, which is just plain water. Okay, now where are we gonna put this fun paint? So for our paint, let's just make some space here. We can put it on an empty palette. So I like this palette because it has a big space here and these spaces can make lot can hold lots of color but if you don't have a palette that's empty and ready to use there are other things you can use in place of this like ice cube trays so ice cube trays are fun because they have already so many spaces but if it's summer and we don't want to use up our ice cube trays forever and we need them for ice cubes, then we will use another substitute. We can also use these little tubs that I collect every time there's takeout and they send me soy sauce or any dips. So we can also use these little tubs and they come with cute little covers. Okay. Other things we will need are paint brushes so that we can test our colors to make sure that the color strength is good and we'll also need um, some paper. I like using card paper, even scratch paper is good. Um, the thicker paper is usually better for watercolor but make sure it's not too shiny because sometimes the paint will not stick to it. And if you have nothing but bond paper that's okay too but just remember when you're painting with bond paper you need quicker brush strokes that way you don't end up with a big hole in your paper and lastly we will need something to mix our paint with so i just found these cool little scoopers that came with a dessert that i bought so we'll just be using them to 
mix up the colors in this pan. And don't forget to keep some tissue or wipes nearby so that you can keep your space clean. Okay, so let's start by scooping our baking soda and putting some baking soda into each container section. Mm, how much paint do we want to make? Pop up. Okay, I think that's enough. Mm, add a little more. There. And then we will need our water. So for the water, let's put in just a few drops first because we don't want to wet it too much. Then we try and mix it up. <laughs> and add a little more. There you go. So I like using the squeezy bottle so that I can also see if I'm adding too little, it's easy to fix. And if I added too much water, then you just add a little bit more of the baking soda. It should look like a nice creamy paste. Ooh, looks like fun. Yeah. So while my spoon is still clean, I will mix the others. three portions because we want to prepare the three paints in red and yellow and blue. Doo -doo -doo. Nicer. So we're looking for a smooth consistency like this. Beautiful. And for the last and creamy and almost ready okay so I think we'll add a little bit more of the water to this one and to this one and then let's see yes, yeah so the baking soda also has a tendency to sink into the container so you may want to stir it up before we start adding in the color. It's like the paint or the, the, the baking soda um, takes a nap at the bottom of the pan. And there. Wake up, baking soda, wake up. Okay, it's looking good. Okay, so we will start with the first color. The first color is the brightest. We will start with some yellow and I'll put two drops and let's check it out and see. Made it super rich, beautiful yellow. And then I will wipe off my Wipe off my spoon before I do the next one, which will be color red. Let's close this so that we don't knock it over and have an accident. Okay, now red. I'll put also two drops. Let's see if we can be able to make a nice, beautiful red. Oh, I love it. Looking really good. Who thought it was 
going to be so easy to make paint. Maybe we won't need to make too many trips now to the paint store to refill our paint since we can now make it at home. Okay, again, we need to clean our spoon and then we will make the last color. Let's not forget to close. Always close, thanks, because you might tip them over. Now this blue is super strong, so I think just one drop will do it. A stronger blue you can always add another drop okay but I like it just this way and then we clean off our spoon again okay so let's see how our paint worked out so we'll also need to test our colors and when we test our colors it's important to also wash our brush in between so I need to bring out a bowl of water and then let's just move this aside and make some space so let's see let's try so we're mixing it up you might need to stir it a little bit so that you can get the paint again waking up and I spilled but that's okay Art making can be a little bit messy. And then let's try and make, look at how pretty that is. Okay, let's get some more. Now, if you'll notice, it's a little bit dry, the paint. Doesn't wanna spread so well. And then it's handy to have some watercolor. Added some water to our watercolor. And then that will make us really nice, softer shade. Okay, I'm gonna make it stronger in the middle. There we go. So if we're happy with that, or we can also add a little bit more yellow. But I think that's okay for now. Okay, let's test our red color. So I washed my brush and dried it. Let's see, stir, 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 wake up for a little red. And then let's paint it here. So it's a very pretty red, kind of orangey, I think. Yeah, but a happy red. Okay, I'm gonna just not mix the colors yet, just be one next to the other and then again you'll notice it's so pasty so we need some water solvent to thin it out ah lovely colors okay let's wash again wash 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 and let's dry our paint brushes so that we're not adding too much water into our paint puddle here Okay, so I'm scraping the sides here, so I just pick up enough. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so again, if you wanted stronger colors, you just make it two drops instead of one, or add even more if you like, and see where that will go. There. And then, let's add just a little bit more of the blue, and then let's add some water, and melt it. Ready. So now we have our red, yellow, and blue. Now I promised we'd make more colors. So let's see if we can do this. We'll add again. You remember how to do it? First we need the binder. We'll put a scoop, scoop it in, in each. And you can hear that I'm at home and there are sounds from the neighbor's dog barking. I think he is trying to chase down a cat. 
Okay, so for this first color, let's add our water. And square to do, square to do, and square to do. Okay, and then we're gonna mix. So for the first color, let's use these two and see what we get. Now, because red is so strong, I will use two drops of yellow, one and two, and we'll close this, one drop of red. And let's mix it up. What color did we get? Beautiful orange. Okay, so we'll test this in a bit. Let's mix the other colors first. And don't forget to wipe because we don't want to. Oh, look, I dropped some color onto my paper. Wonder what interesting technique will come out of that later. So we already have the yellow and the red made the orange. So let's try the red and the blue so because we have a strong color let's see red and one blue and see if that works but usually i don't get good results when i make purple myself but you know we'll see what today does mm. so this one didn't really give us a good purple it looks very very blue Let's see the problem is when you're using food color sometimes they mix in hidden colors inside it so if you don't get the right color it may be because you have hidden mystery colors hiding inside so purple is usually harder to achieve but that's okay let's wipe this up before it gets scary and dangerous there if we add a little bit of red let's see if we can make it stronger yeah okay not quite a purple but it's okay. Next, we will put in some blue and the last color is yellow because we already had yellow and red for the first, red and blue for the second. So the last combination is yellow and blue and one, two yellows because the blue is super strong to add more now. And mix, 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 mix. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful shade of green. So you'll notice that violet is always the hardest color to make, especially if you're making your own. But all the other colors seem to work out just fine. Okay, that's the colors. So in between the yellow and the red, let's see if we can dust this there. In between the yellow and the red, let's see if we can add some of this beautiful color. And we have a nice orange, which is very thick, so I added some water. We now have our orange. Okay, let's add a little more. Oh, so pretty. 
and then between the red and the blue, let's see, it looks kind of brown, huh? Brownish black, hmm, interesting. purple but I do see a little purple tone coming through just a little bit there. and then the last color let's see our green and let's add it down here and up here Happy paint. Now, if you have more spaces here, you can play around with other colors. I'm so curious to hear about your color experiments, what else you were able to come up with. Uh, maybe you can make some browns or some pinks, or you can play with your greens. You can make some yellow green and dark, dark forest green. Or maybe you can also play around with different shades of orange or see if you can even make a black. And there. So I hope you enjoyed making our colors. This was really fun. And let's see also if we can make something else with what we have today. Teacher Robert will help us make a new color creations from our DIY watercolor paint. Okay, so now we have our lovely colors that we just made and as you can see my painting is already starting to dry and it made such a lovely rainbow. It's very interesting. So I'm gonna flip this paper around and let's also try to see if we can play around with a different kind of solvent. So this is um, paint that is made out of baking soda and the baking soda has a special reaction when we mix it with something else. So let's see if we can add some color here. It's making like a little Let's use, instead of water, I have here ooh, some vinegar. And the vinegar acts also like a very good solvent, works just like water, but it kind of makes our paint this. How fun is that? So if you like fizzy paint because it is fun you may want to try to paint with a little bit of vinegar let's see if we can get more fizzes it also fizzes on the paper and then let's also add some yellow here now, this paint, if you let it dry in your paint pan, it will form like a little cake. And then you can just wet it a little bit. Tomorrow, it will be good again to use. You don't have to melt the whole thing. You can just wet the parts that you need. And you can reuse this paint as often as you like. So fun with fizzy. Thank you for joining today's art class. So eyeshiners and eyeshine parents, don't forget to take lots of photos of your color explorations today. I'd love to see your work. 
Let's share them online and post them with hashtag nurture the gift and promo for iShine. So today, we worked on our own DIY watercolors. Next week, teacher Robert will show us creative ways to use them. Let's fill our days with wonder every day with Art Camp.